Hello, my fellow primordial pina coladas. I'm Mr. Church. Today we're going to be looking at some new blueprints that have been created by other base builders and that have been created by myself. I'm the one with the bear head. So usually I have a bunny head, but today it's a bear head. Uh, just one of those things that I like to have on my face so that people... Well, anyway, the first blueprint we're going to be making was created by Vapid Valentine. I'm going to be linking that video, so go check that out because it's also one of her best builds and uh, it's really worth giving it a peep. But anyway, uh, the reason why we have to have a vine blueprint is because the people that created the vines don't realize how building in this game works, and so they made it so it can only snap to a solid single f uh, wall. And this is obviously fucking stupid, uh, because, you know, it's extremely limiting to what we can do. But luckily, you know, we can break the game and find ways around their broken items so that we can actually use them after we've spent actual money on them. So, what you're going to be doing is blueprinting a vine, a wall, and any, f any item that gets its support from the ground. And this functions in the exact same way as the place anywhere walls that we've made in our last blueprints video. And I'm going to link that video as well to check out if you haven't already, because that's kind of a good basis for this video. But anyway, um, you will notice that it won't let you place it on a foundation or a roof. And that's because the wall is trying to snap to the foundation, but it knows that's not the right snapping point, so it won't let you. And usually putting a carpet under that does let you do that. If you want to delete the wall from the vine, turn it into a doorway, and then you can delete it. But I'm going to modify this blueprint slightly by using this tiny mat as our floor item, because that's going to simultaneously provide a, a carpet underneath um, the wall, and it will be our floor item, and it will allow us to place it on foundations because it's interrupting that wall from trying to snap to something. And you have to use very thin walls or it's going to interact with the wall and say it's intersecting. But now we should be able to place this place anywhere uh, vine blueprint on foundations as well. And uh, the concept here of using that rug underneath the uh, blueprint. Um, I got that idea from watching an Aussie kitty cat video, which I'll also link. And we're going to be going through and making sure our, our blueprints are able to place everywhere and not just on the basic ground. Uh, but this will allow you to place it against walls when you normally couldn't, like half walls and things like that. And, uh, you know, it lets you actually be able to use the vines that they put in the game and, uh, you know, made us purchase with the money. Now, right here is an idea that I got from Galactic Builds, and I'm going to link the video where I saw this in. But essentially, we're making a place anywhere wall, but we're putting the floor item a little bit up in the air. And what happens is you're able to sink these walls down into the ground using blueprints, which I didn't realize. And that actually opens a lot of possibilities going forward. So on its own, you can use this concept as a just uh, sunken in wall thingy that you can place in, in different areas. And uh, it's um, you know, we're going to be able to use this um, idea in our own builds as we go forward. So a lot of times people will build um, underpinnings on their foundations using catwalks and snapping a half wall down like this. Now, when you do this, it's very difficult to put a vine that goes all the way down to the ground. And I tried to do this in my last video, and I'm gonna link that as well. Uh, and you'll see the ridiculous workaround I had to do to put a vine in. But using the technologies of Vapid Valentine and Galactic Builds and combining them together, we can make a place anywhere vine blueprint that will work no matter what level your underpinnings are at. Um, so what I mean is we can just place it like this. These catwalks are just for support. And you can use, you don't have to use this fish, by the way. You can use any item that gets its support from the ground or whatever. And that is how these blueprints function. And I'm going to go into the mechanics of them in a little bit. I don't want to overwhelm you, so what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to mansplain a little bit, and then I'm going to have ADHD and I'll forget what I'm saying, and that'll stop the mansplaining to give you like a reprieve. 
And then if you're really missing it in the meantime, you can go on Reddit and read some of those posts on there with like all the mustache wax people and weird stuff. And um, anyway, so what you're going to do is when you want to use this blueprint, you, you can just snap away from the build where you have that blueprint in there. And uh, then you can take your blueprint that we made. And now it'll be at the exact right height for whatever you know no matter like how sunken in those foundations are it doesn't matter this you can use this whenever you make underpinnings as long as you do it in this method now i do recommend putting if you're going to have wallpaper on the underpinnings putting that on first before shoving this in because what ended up happening here happening that's not a word it is now is uh the vines were way too close so they're actually inside that that looks terrible don't worry about it though this is just for an example and i don't really you can just get off my back about it now i'm going to include two things that i figured out with vines that are not blueprints just because we're on the topic of vines and that makes sense right no so anyone uh that has built for a while in this game knows you can make double walls by doing that what i just showed but using vines you can actually do a different style of double wall where the wall is actually inside itself so essentially just turn that into a doorway so you can move the foundation put the wall back to normal and then you can take a normal wall and snap it right inside the vine facing the other direction and then you can put the foundation back and you have you can get rid of the vine and you have these walls that are like you know front they're actually inside each other and facing the other way and you can use different textures and different wall types to have really cool um you know really cool looks like this boarded up window and, ex and stuff the other thing i want to show that i use the vines to do that made things a lot easier was using vines to make triple walls and uh i made triple walls in my last video and you can also want maybe try to use triple walls when you're making like tutor style or shoji walls so what you're doing here is we're going to remove this so the vines are floating right there we're going to look over at that person who's sneaking in the in the under bushes that's not a word you're going to go back and uh, grab your wall and place it on facing the other way and what this does is it puts the wall exactly one wall in thickness out from the foundation, which allows you to double up the walls um, facing the same direction. So uh, if you make that a doorway, you can move the foundation over. And then once it's over here, you just take that, snap it on the edge here. And now you have walls that are right next to each other and you didn't have to eyeball the foundations to get them into that position. And uh, what people will do is they'll make the inner one have wallpaper and it'll show through on the wood and kind of give you this Tudor style look, at, which I'll show right here. Usually people will use like a white color um, and it'll give you that look. But this gives you a really easy way of doing that. In my last build, I used triple walls to put uh, two half walls in the middle and then two doorways on the outside for like the window frames and uh, I had to eyeball it to do it but using this method it will all be exactly the same and in line without messing anything up or anything looking goofy so it makes it a lot easier and a lot simpler and you don't have to cry yourself to sleep at night I still do that but that's unrelated as something to do with a different type of trauma that's unrelated to Fallout 76 almost definitely. Now, the next thing I want to do is we're looking at these free place uh, blueprints, which we made, and they will not let you place if you're trying to place them on uh, certain rocks or um, foundations or roofs. Again, what's happening is the door or the wall is trying to snap to that surface and it knows that it could snap to it in another life but it can't snap right now so it gets confused placing carpets in between those snapping points interrupts that from happening and it keeps it from being idiotic again i got this idea from an aussie kitty cat video the one that i linked so you go check that one out if you haven't already and uh, with a doorway I found, you do have to place them very specifically or they won't work. This one I made and it doesn't work. It says it's floating. 
um, it does. It's not actually floating. Um, doorways are allowed to float. That's not the right error code. But anyway, just move these carpets a little bit until it'll let you. It will work eventually. Um, we're gonna make the same blueprints with the basic walls and they're not going to have any issues at all it's just the doorway acts kind of weird so just uh test that one out when you're building this <clears throat> and i want to make sure that works now um the other thing you may have found is that when you're making uh blueprints with doorways in them you often can't place a door in that doorway so if the if it's sitting on a foundation then you can and some surfaces, like over here, there's a rock under there, so it, it thinks there's a, you know, a floor. But doors aren't allowed to go in without there being some kind of floor underneath them, uh, because they decided, you know, floors were broken and we were breaking the game by making a door. Um, and so it's going to turn red any other time you try to do it, if you're just building it in the grass or whatever. Um, so I wanted to make a blueprint that would allow us to place doors anywhere without any fucking around. I made a super complicated one using like roofs and catwalks, but you had to go under the map to get rid of certain items on it. It did work, but it was too, uh, stupid. This one is a lot simpler. And what I did was I took our blueprint we just made and I placed it carefully on top of this carpet. On top of the carpet is important because this carpet that I'm using here is thick with two C's and if you if it's meshed in with it like if you snap that through it the blueprint isn't going to place because the well it will place but the door won't go in because the wall will be too low and it'll intersect with the carpet but if you do it this way so it's on top of that carpet it should go in just fine and that got me thinking uh what's actually happening with these blueprints is all the same thing it's the same concept it is an item in the game needs item specific support and it needs a something that requires support from the ground. And in most cases, we use the catwalk as that item-specific support for the wall. But the door should work in the same manner because it's item-specific support. It should work the same as the catwalk. So I thought I'd try this out. What if I just used the door and the doorway... And those two items give each other the item-specific support, which the game checks for. And then it sees that there's something that takes its support from the ground, which it prioritizes. That's what the rug is for. Or any, you know, floor item that we use in these blueprints. That takes priority. So as long as there's two items that gain their support from each other, and then another item that gets its support from the ground, this, or these blueprints will work. And that's why this works the same as the catwalk and the same as the vines is there's two items that get their support from each other and then something else. And this one specifically needs that rug under it or the door won't go down because doors also have an additional requirement that they need something underneath them. Um, but anyway, this is uh, this blew my mind a little bit because it actually opens the door. Get it? The door? That's so funny for like a lot of other ideas and um so i want to like go back to that later on because i think that it's interesting but also this blueprint that we made in our last blueprint video doesn't work on foundations it will work obviously in the grass but it doesn't work on foundations so just do the exact same thing make it with the carpet under it instead of in front of it and it'll work just fine and then we can do the same thing with the two walls. If we put that carpet underneath it, it'll work on foundations as well. And I also used this in my last video, and it wasn't fixed. I didn't do this yet, and so I had to place a carpet down to be able to put the blueprint on top of it. But if you have this blueprinted like this, it'll go down on any surface, and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Also, if you do place this blueprint specifically, or any of the half-wall blueprints, and then you put another half-wall on top of it, they will get locked together because they don't have any support and they're supporting each other but they're not allowed to float on their own so in order to get rid of them you will need to destroy one or the other one and what this does is it removes the requirement of support from one of them and then the other one is allowed to be deleted so if i break this one the one on the top can then be deleted and vice versa and you can do that you can burn either one 
I know uh, some of you probably already know this, but some of you might not. And we have the same issue when we try to place our stair blueprint that we made when it, with it not going on foundations. And, you know, a lot, a lot of times you're going to want to place them on foundations. So if you place a little mat here underneath where that would snap, and again, I'm using the thinnest carpet possible so that it doesn't create intersecting issues with the stairs when I try to place the blueprint. And you should be able to do this and it should be fine and everything will be dandy. Uh, your whole life is just a miracle and I want to throw candy everywhere when I see it. Um, but what's happening in these blueprints again is the same thing. The catwalk is the item specific support for the stairs and the stairs are the item specific support for the catwalk and then the rug is the ground item. But we've done enough of these to know that probably the game will prioritize floor support items but it should also prioritize wall support so that's something i want to look into a little bit later um but obviously that works fine now the stone fireplace from the scoreboard has these extension pieces that can only be placed on this foundation or on other extension pieces so we can make the same exact concept of a blueprint where there's two items that give each other item specific support and i'll show you that if you just use that it's not going to work the, this is just two pieces um and the game doesn't recognize that because there's nothing for them to actually sit on i'm lagging out so i'm going to close the menu and reopen it and then it should fix that lag but uh we can make a blueprint that includes a floor item as well and any item that gets its support from the ground and that will allow us to place these two pieces now to get it at the right height i'm going to use these two suitcases here i just want to say that you know i've seen several people make some version of this blueprint already i don't know who did it first um, but I do, I did see Kiki B had a blueprint tutorial about this where she discussed something interesting that was happening with it, and I'll go into that in a moment. But first I want to add that, um, when you place the item down here, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it gets its support from the ground. And I like using these tiny lights because they have such a small surface area. Uh, but if you blueprint the bottom one and then the top one, when you go down, when you go to place your blueprint, um, what happens is the top one becomes the support from the bottom one. And um, so if I place this here on the grass like this, if I pick up the bottom one, it doesn't pick up the top one. But if I pick up the top one, it picks up both of them, which means the top one is somehow the support for the bottom one. And that's really annoying because if you just want to have one of these, then you have the one that's floating. You don't have the one on the bottom. So that makes it more difficult to work with. And uh, so I found that if you actually blueprint them in the other order, if you blueprint the one on the top first, and then blueprint the one on the bottom, it actually uh, flips that. So the one on the bottom is actually the support, which is what you want all along. And uh, I think we can name this one Fireplace Chunky, uh, because why wouldn't you name it that? You know, that's, I think, a good idea. But as you can see, when you place this one down, the uh the one that you want to be the support which is the bottom is finally the support and then you can remove the top one if you want and you can just have the one if you want you can remove the floor item because that's not the support of it um it's just the main support for the blueprint itself uh, then you can snap pieces to them you can remove pieces from them they're pretty easy to work with they don't get locked up or anything which is great now what kiki b mentioned in her video which is interesting is that she had made this blueprint which is doing this dumb thing and uh but she found out that if she placed that weird blueprint on uh foundations it flipped it and it made the bottom one be the the support and so i, I tested it on roofs and uh it was doing the same thing and i assumed that meant it would also work that way on like carpets and other things like that so i tried placing it on a carpet and it, it again did the same thing and then i realized what's happening in these blueprints is what's what's going on is rather than the bottom one becoming the blueprint the actual thing you're placing it on is the support i think i just said blueprint when i meant to say support so just forget about that you know what i mean um so like with this one you placed it on nothing so that top one remains the support just like it was in the blueprint because of the order you blueprinted it in 
but with the ones that you placed on the like roof and whatnot uh that actually became the support for those stone pieces so over here if i pick up this roof piece um that's the support of everything not this bottom fireplace extension piece but the roof itself and then the support goes upwards from there and i know that's a you know gripping information that's a really interesting and great thank you so much for sharing it i know i made your day with that knowledge but for those of you who don't think uh, an idea of a great time is um figuring out the build mechanics of fallout 76 which make no sense inherently while you masticate large chocolates and uh twirl your whiskers um this thing that I just explained a little bit is why this concept that AD Gaming showed in his video, which I'll link, um, which is if you place a mat down and then you snap these uh, extension pieces over top of them, uh, the mat becomes the support of these extension pieces. If, you, if I pick up the mat somehow in there, it'll pick up all the stuff stacked on top of it. So it's weird that they do that, but that's why this works when you do that. Now, this means you don't necessarily need to make a blueprint to work with these pieces, but keep in mind that the mat does take up budget, so the blueprint can save you budget, um, and it just depends on what you're building, how much it matters, how much you want to be able to adjust where you place down the stone pieces, and how easy you can hide the carpet that you use to move it around so that's just an option and i thought i'd include it because it's helpful for working with these fireplace pieces now to go back what i was talking about earlier about how maybe these will also work with wall items because what's happening is the game needs the item specific support of the two items and then it needs something else to prioritize the support for the entire blueprint and it's going to prioritize floor anything that takes its support from the floor but I think that it will also prioritize things that take its support from the wall, given how other wall blueprints function that we've messed around with in the past. So if I were to take this, I can then slap it onto the side of a building, like so, and it'll work just like that. We'll have that functionality just like that. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? And then we can remove this, and we have that, and this opens up a lot of different ideas when we're going forward. For example, we can make a wall blueprint using the, the vines. We'll use Vapid Valentine's Place Anywhere Vine Blueprint. But instead of a floor decor item, let's try to use a wall decor item and see if we can just slap it up against a wall. So first, I use that trick I showed where you can use a vine to flip a wall out to get it exactly one wall in width away. And then I'm going to take any wall that I want, but not the barn wall, because I can't build with a barn wall because I get diseased when I try to. When I look at it, it looks so horrific that I get cataracts immediately. But take a sign and place it on that, and then pull it towards this vine. Now what this does is it puts that sign touching the vines, but backwards. So if we go into here and we grab the sign... I'm in free cam mode, and I'm just going to move around until I see the sign up in the top right corner. Um, it says wall right now. It will say sign. Oh, it's on it. And then you're going to hold down to blueprint it. Then you're going to blueprint the vines as well. And then you're going to also blueprint this back wall. Now, uh, this will give us a blueprint that has the vines on it and will allow us to place any old place that we want against a wall. So what we're going to do is just go up like this, floopy floop floop, and uh, then I'm going to take this vine, vine's wall, and this should theoretically work just the same as the floor decor ones because we have the item specific support pieces and then we have the other uh, piece, which becomes the support of the entire blueprint. And then we can go into free cam mode to delete that sign. And then this might come in handy in certain places where you can't get like a wall 
uh, or a floor decor piece in. And I can do the same exact blueprint I just made, except inverted to make a place anywhere wall using the vines as our catwalks. So I did this trick where I, which I showed earlier, where we flip it to get that wall out exactly by one uh, wall and width. Get rid of those vines, we don't need them. Make this a doorway so that I can move the foundation over back here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a little sign on the doorway one. And the doorway isn't gonna be part of the blueprint. This is just something for our sign to be on so the sign will be backwards because you need that sign facing outwards so that it'll snap the right way. And so our blueprint will have that sign as its snapping point. You're going to place the wall on there, which will snap it right up against that backward sign. Place a vine, which is going to act as our catwalk in this situation. And then blueprint the vines, the wall, and then get inside of this uh -huh, and uh, blueprint that sign. And uh, this will be our uh, free place um, wall. Uh, uh, don't overthink it. Um wall it's gonna be it's gonna be like a wall. well it's like a wall that you place on the wall so i would call it in my opinion like a wall wall so this could come in handy if you again maybe uh, wanted to slap it up against some uh in-game wall to cover up a hole or maybe you want to double up a wall and you can't get a second foundation in because you're too close to the edge of your build zone or something and you could use this free place wall wall um, to slap that wall facing outwards up against the uh, wall that you have. So yeah, you grab that and it will go into place. And I know uh, if you guys want to use the title free place wall wall on your blueprint, then that's completely fine. I know like my brilliance knows no bounds. So like that name, it's just incredible. And if you wanted to use that name, well, I can't stop you, can I? So anyway, you can use this, uh, you know, we can just slap it anywhere we want. You're probably not going to do that, but it's something you can do with it, basically. But thank you guys so much for watching and uh, for pretending to be interested in this extremely mansplained and nerdy video. Um, I want to thank my Patreon members and channel members for your support. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me. If you're interested in supporting me in that way, uh, there is a link for it in the description. And I do post uh, bonus content up on Patreon as well. Uh, I have a Discord. If you're not in there already, please hop in there. It's a great community, except for the person in Mr. Church who's in there. But he's probably going to get kicked out pretty soon. And I also stream on Twitch. If you're still watching this, go give me a follow on Twitch, and you can see me do stupid things on there. But I'll see you guys in the next video.